Hello everyone, this is Jimmy and welcome to episode 4 of SevTech Ages. So if you remember last episode, we just barely got our feet into our feet wet in age one. We could craft crafting tables and chests. Like wow, like what what a huge improvement. So um I've done a little bit of cleaning up around the base in the meantime. Uh, I organized our carts into a number of double chests. Um, we'll pretty soon be upgrading these into copper chests, but uh, that requires, well, copper, which we don't quite have yet. But we'll be getting that soon. Um, also added some very basic automation to our clay kiln and fire pit, or whatever this is, stone grill. Uh, let me really quickly show you how these dung pipes work. So let's grab some, I guess, raw potatoes. So when you put stuff in here, this is normal, you know, a hopper feeds it into the grill. When the grill's done cooking it, we'll see a potato drop out of this pipe. And the way the dung pipe works is that it pulls the outputs from the machine, there we go, and it drops it in the world as an item entity, which falls into the hopper, which gets collected in a regular chest. And, uh... You know, it's basically like using, um, it's a, it's a, we could do the same thing here in the furnace, but the furnace uses fuel, whereas this doesn't. So that's kind of the advantage. Uh, likewise, we can use the kiln, this clay kiln here to cook wood into charcoal. If we have any wood that I want, uh, it looks like it's all planks. So, um, but I'm sure you get the idea. Uh, oh, before we get too far into this episode, I wanted to say that uh, somebody in the comments mentioned that they wanted a world download. So I have a world download of, you know, basically at this point of this world available. I'll put it in the comments. Um, I'm thinking I'll do a world download at the beginning of each new era. Uh, now, as for how... I guess there's a slight problem with world downloads in this pack in that for, in order for you to actually play the pack, you have to give yourself all these advancements. And I don't know of a good way, like, I know there's commands that you can use to give yourself individual advancements, um, by name or something, but I don't know how to actually give yourself all the advancements in the era, for instance. So if somebody has an idea for how to do that, let me know. Um, otherwise the world download is there for you, but you might have to at least give yourself this, like, core line of advancements so that you can, you know, do things. Anyways... Um, going back to the game as we have it now, our next step is to get into metal prospecting. So to uh, locate ores, we have to create a weak dowsing rod, and a plumb line will help us as well. So let's make that weak dowsing rod. That's just three wood and a couple sticks, but as I just discovered, we are out of wood. Let's chop just a little bit to get started, and then... Three wood and a couple sticks. Does that give us a book? So let me see if I have the geolysis book somewhere. Doesn't look like it. Uh, all right, maybe we'll get one for this. Let's make a plumb line. So this will tell us um, if there's any... Uh oh, can I make a spindle? I can't. This will tell us uh, what Y level we're on. So we need a bunch of string and some sticks. That's easy enough. And then this will tell us if there's any ores in a 48 block line. And putting those two together, uh, we'll be able to... Sorry, we'll be able to find ores um, by looking at surface ore samples. I'll show you what I mean in a second. I need a rock. Oh, you even get your spindles back. How nifty. Mm, do I still not have the geolysis book? There it is. So this book, um, it'll tell you a bit, let's see. So it just says surface samples tell you a bit about what's underneath it. Uh, you can right click it to get the sample. This is the page I want. So right now we are looking for 
uh, well, let, let's go find one of the veins. And conveniently, we had left some surface samples intact right on the edge of the base. Let's sleep so we don't have to fight mobs. But um, I'll show you what they look like, and then I'll show you at least my way of uh, prospecting for the ore. So right over here, we should have... I forget what ore it is, but... Azurite, which off the top of my head, I believe that is a type of tin. No, it's a type of copper. All right. So it can be found between Y level 15 and 51. So let's see what we're at now. Because remember, this dowsing rod only goes 48 blocks down. So we're at 63. And the minimum that it was found in was like 16? 19 so 63 minus 19 is less than 48 so no matter how low it is we will be able to find it with this uh from the surface then what i do is i turn on chunk borders start in one corner of the chunk and just walk around the border looking for a hit so when you right click it uses one durability from the rod but you know if you use it up that's fine just make a second rod um and here it'll say you know how many pieces of ore are underneath that uh that place so you saw it over this area we, we hit we had some dings which means we should be able to find the ore vein if we dig down here somewhere and if you want you can ding a, ding around a little bit look for the center of the vein which looks to be here ish so we can turn off trunk borders and then dig here um now we don't know how deep it is but if we just dig in like a usually i just do a spiral staircase pattern we should be able to work our way down to it. So I'll do some digging and oh, let, let's see how close it is. If it's uh, pretty far, I'll just cut this part out. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to bring torches. So let, let me go get some torches so I can see. All right, then I'll be right back. So now that we're in age one, we have this uh, access to legitimate torches and this slightly easier torch recipe. So now that we have some torches, let's go again. Um, I realized looking at the book, it did mention something about this having iron pickaxe, but um, we don't have iron. So I suspect that's just a, uh, a thing that's been changed, but the book hasn't been updated to match it. But um, I guess we'll find out when we get there. So as we dig down, I'm not actually sure we can dig through this rock either. It's taking an awfully long time, but Worst case, we don't get the drop, right? Yeah, it looks like we don't have the mining level to dig bluestone yet. So anyways, um, as we dig down, sooner or later, we're bound to run into that azurite vein. But digging this is taking forever, so I'll just cut to when we get there. All right, here we have it, azurite. Um, so if you look at the top where our uh, JI, or our whale is, apparently we unlock that in era age one as well. You can see at Y, 38, we were able to find it. So, um, let's see if we can dig it with a stone tool. We can, and it drops copper clusters, which I believe, uh, I don't know what this is, but we can cook, we can melt it in our melter for one ingot. So that's exactly what we want. Now, what I'm going to do is, since this is about the center of the vein, I'm actually just going to dig straight down. I know you're not supposed to dig straight down in Minecraft, but uh, odds are I'm not going to fall into lava. And I'm going to dig about like six or seven blocks down. And what I'm going to do here is place a... I have some wood on me. I'm going to place um, one piece of wood first, get my totem carving knife thingy out and carve that into a totem base and then I'm going to carve uh which one is it one of these gives mining speed and that's the one I want is it cow or buffalo let's look it up it's one of these things after looking it up enough times you'll remember it but I haven't done this in like a year or so I don't remember it right now. Buffalo makes you mine faster. So you want to make a six tall buffalo totem to give you the maxed out buff for that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Or six was all we needed, wasn't it? Can I, is this actually making it not work? So then as we dig closer to that, um, that totem, we get haste three, which will make this go a little bit faster at least. So uh, let me mine out a bit of this vein and I'll show you how big it is. Um, it'll probably be a couple hundred total ores. So uh, yeah, I'll be right back once I have like the rough outline of it dug out. All right, so I dug out, uh, I guess a cross section of it approximately. So from this side, basically along the long axis, it's like a, a what's the word, a spheroid? spheroid? Um, it's about 16 long this way. Uh, along the short axis, it's about 7, and along the vertical axis, it's about 8. Which puts it right around 800 total blocks if it were like a cuboid. But um, since it's a spheroid, it'll be a little bit less. Either way, um, I'm probably not going to dig out this whole vein right now just because I don't need 800 copper. And it'll take a long time to dig it. So for now, I'm just going to dig as much as uh, maybe like, I don't know, two or three stacks of this stuff. Um, and then we'll just remember that we have a copper vein right here at the edge of our base for when we need more. So um, I'll be back when I'm done digging a sufficient amount of this. All right, it's been a good 10 minutes maybe, and I've gathered up seven stacks of uh, copper. If you look, this, by my judgment, I think is about half the vein. It goes down another, what, like three or four more levels, but um, I think this will do for now. So let's head back up, and then we can begin processing this. For now, though, we don't really have a good way of processing this, which is why I didn't want to get too much, because we'll be bottlenecked by our processing. So back on the surface, um, I'll leave those samples there for now, just so I remember what vein it is. I could also mark it in my atlas, which would probably be a good idea if it was a little further away. So if you look at these copper clusters, the only way we can process this, it, uh, we don't have access to this. Well, I guess these are disabled, so we'll never get access to a CRS. We don't have a crusher from immersive engineering, obviously. So the only thing we can do is melt it in a melter. So let's start doing that, and I'll show you how slow it is. So can we burn this? Yes, we can. Perfect. So this is the fuel. It goes in the heater, and then the uh, ores go into here. We can obviously use hoppers to send them in. So let's actually set that up. I don't need these barrel stuff here. So one hopper to send in fuel, and one more to send in uh, smeltables, if I can. Apparently I'm out of hoppers. All right, so one for fuel, one for smeltables, and I need a couple chests, which apparently I'm also out of. I'm really bad at having stuff on hand. So uh, fuel goes in there, smeltables go in here. We'll start processing all of it, although we definitely won't finish it. Um, for now, since we can't make molds, I believe, we have to cast it as blocks. So let's see. If we get this copper fluid, right, yeah, we don't, it's stage two that we get access to molds. So because we can't cast it as molds, we have to cast it as blocks, um, which means we have to melt nine ingots of it at a time. So let's see. Our first three are almost done, and it's used one block of our charcoal. So it looks like it'll take about a block of charcoal per uh, three copper. And since this is just like the porcelain melter, we cannot expand it like we can with a regular smeltery and make it, you know, process more at a time. So when we melt enough of this, we can then pour it into here, which will, you know, eventually congeal into a uh, into a block of copper. And likewise, we can use a couple hoppers to automate the extraction from the crafting or from the 
casting basin and the casting table. We'll put a hopper there. Make more chests, because I keep running out of those. Uh, normally, you can automate the use of the faucets with either a redstone signal or a... Um, can I get that? There we go. Either a redstone signal or a mechanical user type device, but I don't think we have either yet. Right? We don't have access to anything redstone. I wonder if there's... We have buttons. Can I make a timer with just buttons? If I have a piston, I can? We do not have pistons. Alright, let me think about it a bit to see if I can come up with a way to make a, uh, a redstone timer using only buttons as a redstone emitter. Alright, I gave it some thought and I think without a, uh, without a redstone torch, I don't think it's possible. I think with buttons and torches, you could probably pull off a timer. You wouldn't really have any choice over uh, the period of the timer, but at least you'd have a timer. But without torches, I don't think you can do it. So anyways, while this copper processes, the next thing we need is either we can go get some coal just for uh, convenience, or perhaps more importantly, we can get some tin. Because with coal or with copper and tin, we can make an alloy kiln and then make some bronze. And with bronze, that opens up, uh, for one, bronze tools, which are much better than the stone tools we've been using, but then we can get into the rest of age one. So let me go do some exploring and see if we can find us a tin vein. All right, here we have it, a teal light sample. So if we look uh, in our map, we're a little ways from home, but not too far. There's also a Shogoth layer, if you look right over there. So I hopefully don't have to get close enough to that to aggro anything, but um, teal light, I check the book real quick and made sure is a tin variant. So larger, harder to access resource fan for tin between 20 and 55. So let's once again check our uh, Y level, although since we're right on C level, I expect it to be 63 or 62. So let's do our usual thing and see if we can locate. Hey, would you look at that? We located it. Good. I was hoping I wouldn't have to go up there because if we have to go up too far, we might not be able to find it with this. So uh, this, I mean, let's just start here. Uh, let's go one over so I can spiral staircase without hitting the water. And I, I'm just going to dig down and uh, find this vein. I expect it will be quite large. Let's see what it looks like once we're there. And here it is. For a second, I thought I might have missed it or something. I had to dig down quite a way. So right now we are all the way down at Y26. Right, so we had to dig down, what, like 40-ish blocks? But um, once again, let's... Uh, I'll, generally speaking, or I'll, I'll try to dig out the rough shape of the vein and see what, you know, how big it is. And I'll put a totem down. And let's... Uh, I'll probably gather about 10-ish stacks of this again. And then um, I'll probably just head directly back to base. I don't see you there. All right, we're back at our base, and our tin is now in our input chest waiting to be processed. Um, we got about the same amount of tin as we had copper, which is fine. I think uh, the actual alloy uses more copper than tin, but when it's done melting this last block of copper, or these last few pieces of copper for one more block, we'll do the tin. So we have, we'll have four blocks of copper, and we'll make some tin after, but to make, um, what's it called, bronze? Bronze ingots, you can, uh, or you, you, we can't mix bronze in the uh, alloy, this thingy, the uh, melter. We have to make bronze in a alloy kiln for now. So the alloy kiln is made by um, these kiln bricks from immersive engineering. We need eight of them, and then we need a uh, the immersive engineering hammer to form the multi-block. So we'll need some sandstone and some bricks. Is there, how do we make brick? We can just, okay. So let's make that up and then uh, I'll set it up and show you how it works. So uh, I have our kiln blocks, but our first step is to turn these blocks that we cast into ingots because I don't think we can alloy the blocks. So we just smash them on the table. Next, we let's set up our kiln. We can just put it right behind this uh, mini smeltery thing I guess so it's a two by two 
see. Where do I want it? Sure, this will do. 2x2x2 two by two by two tall. And then we just right click the front face with the hammer. And uh, this is a furnace fuel powered kiln. So if we do, let's, uh, let's do 10 maybe. And I think it's 3 to 1 ratio. Let's double check. Bronze. So copper to tin is a 3 to 1 ratio. But it looks like you can also make it out of other things. Copper and I don't, I don't know what this is. But whatever. Um, copper and tin. And then it just cooks up. So this will take it a little bit. But once the first one is done, we will be able to complete the quest. Um, and then let's see what we can look into. We can either make the uh, very basic demonic will the basic uh, blood altar but i think let's go along the this core quest line and work our way towards getting to the beneath because i want uh black quartz for one because it makes pretty good tools and to get to astral sorcery so that means we will need to get an abyssonomicon let's complete that objective or that uh advancement and let's see what the abyssonomicon takes this is the Abyssal Craft book. And it's both like the documentation book and it serves as a, or it's a Necronomicon, sorry. It's both the documentation book and it serves as uh, like a battery, I guess, for the PE or potential energy, which is the, I guess, the energy resource of the mod. So we need four rotten flesh, four plagued flesh, and some plant fiber. I think we should have all of that. All right, so once we make this, uh, the, again, this will both serve as the documentation. So we'll be reading it a bunch. And we'll have to charge it through um, one of their like ritual thingies. Cool. So there's another advancement. Now this is the one that's not so fun. We need to get the Abyssal Craft, uh, I guess, trophies. So there's two ways to get trophies in this pack. Or maybe they're not called trophies. Sorry. So these statues, we can either craft them, um, which need monolith stone, uh, clay, and one of the colored dyes, as well as a fair amount of uh, shogoth flesh, or we can entice the shogoths into creating them. And I think it's easier to craft it than it is to create it. So the crafting recipe for these, um, I don't think, it's not a vanilla uh, abyssal craft thing. Because in vanilla Abyssal Craft, you actually just have to make those stupid Shogoths create the towers. So anyways, the way to make them create the towers is to gather like six or more of them in an area where they can see the sky. And then just like make them, you know, play with each other or whatever for about a minute. Um, and you may or may not get one. But uh, here we can just kill a number of uh, Shogoths. Which, while they're pretty tanky and they hit like a truck, I think we can pull that off. And then we can just make it. So, if you remember, we found that Shogoth lair right here, which is quite close. So let's head over there and kill ourselves some Shogoths. But perhaps first, let's, um... They hurt pretty bad, so I'm thinking let's make some bronze weapons and, uh... Bronze armors. So... I believe they're 100% immune to all range damage. So as great as it would be to try to go after them with um, bows and arrows, we can't do that. So we just need weapons and armor. So let me make that, and I'll be right back. All right, here we are with that uh, lair right over there. I have a full set of bronze armor, which doesn't... I guess it's about iron armor in quality. Um, so it doesn't provide that much protection, and it will break pretty quickly if we start taking uh, their acid spit hits. So my plan is to run down there. Uh, I have a small amount of this sturdy stone, which I'm told they're unable to grief, like they can't break this. So my plan is to rush it, more or less block off the entrance with this, so that we can uh, pull them one by one and, you know, not have to deal with all of them at once, because that would be a disaster. 
So let's hope we're quick enough. Oh god. And it seems... Oh, that was just a piranha. <laughs> Scared by a useless piranha. Alright, so now that I have them like this, I don't think this one can hit me. Uh, did I not make a bronze sword? See how they'll be pulled up like that? Let's cover this a bit just so that I feel a little safer. Um, and let's make a bronze sword as well. Of course I didn't bring a crafting table. Alright then, I guess we're hitting them with our stone axe. For whatever reason, the bronze axe has very poor damage. Can I stand here? Ooh, cannot stand there. Alright, so we just slowly whittle these down. Um, and then when they die, they should drop their flesh, which is what they're after. I'll probably stag a little bit of this monolith stone, too. So anyways, um... Yeah, this is totally cheesy, but these mobs are ridiculously powerful for when the game's asking us to fight them. So I don't really feel bad. I hope they can't get through that. Anyways, um, I'm just going to kill these off and I'll be back once I've gathered up a fair amount of the Shogoth flesh. Alright, I accidentally broke my axe while hitting them so I don't have a weapon anymore. But um, I was able to get 36 flesh. There's a bit more down in there, but... Uh, I'm not the one that's going to jump in there to get it. So 36 should be enough, at least for now. Um, I'll leave this wall up in case we need to, you know, come here and farm again later. As you'll see, in the time I spent here, I think because they were aggroed on me, they didn't build any towers. Or maybe because they couldn't see enough of the sky. I don't know. Either way, um, before we head back, I guess, let's grab a little bit of this monolith stone. Uh, I don't really want to flood the place, but... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll grab maybe like, I don't know, 10, 20 pieces of it should be enough. Nope, that's gonna... F nope. Anyways, um, and then I'll see you back at base and uh, we can continue on to the next step in Abyssalcraft. Alright, we're back at the base. So let's go ahead and see if we can make some of these uh, statues. So I think all the statues are a, a monolith stone, a clay, and one of the dyes. And I just picked out a couple of dyes we had and I hope there are corresponding statues. So I'm not even going to try to pronounce their names, I'm just going to make them. Yes, no red one, no white one. Uh, is, does it happen to be a pink one? Somehow I doubt it. Yeah, unlucky. Alright, let me get a couple more dye colors then and see if we can make three statues. In theory, one is enough, but um, I think the more statues you have around, the faster it goes. Of course, I fell in here. I should really figure out something that doesn't require me to get the totem up to get out of these pens. Let's see if there's a orange one, I mean a purple one, and a... did I do orange already? No, okay, so here's three unique statues. I'm not 100% sure if they have to be unique, but I went with that anyways. So the decorative statue doesn't do anything, surrounded by Shogoth flesh, and you get a real statue. Alright, here we have it. Three statues, and I think, um, let's read the book about the way this charging works. Because I don't recall off the top of my head. Potential, en oops, not that one. Potential energy. Blah, blah, blah. Alright, so this is how it works. Statues have transfer range to collectors. I believe you don't need a collector, you can just stand there. This is what when placed on monolith stone pillar blocks, the statue's range can be increased by up to two blocks. So is it two pillar blocks? Statues on pillars can transfer energy to collectors further down. Okay, so we want those monolith stone pillar blocks. Uh, easy enough, and we need... Ooh, do I have enough? So this makes six? Yeah, perfect. And then the other thing we need is an energy collector. 
Again, this isn't strictly required because we can just, uh, nope, I ran out of monolith stone, son of a gun. All right, um, let's just not do that, build one, then I'll just stand there and gather the uh, potential energy into, like, while holding the book. So let's put our, our dies away. All right, um, there is a small chance that this will summon uh, stuff, including Shogoths. So generally speaking, I recommend doing it a little bit away from your base because Shogoths uh, will randomly blow blocks up. So I think if I just do it across the water here, it's a little close for my taste, but uh, I don't feel like swimming two, three hundred blocks away. So the way this works is if we take a couple of these pillars and build them too high. I don't think they need to be symmetrical or anything. We can place these on top of it. And then when we hold the book, we'll see little zaps. We'll see little zaps. There we go. And each zap sends uh, five potential energy into the book. It also has a small chance of summoning like a mob that'll be unplugged. Or sometimes it's just those little shadow mobs that you can just go ahead and kill. Sometimes you get as much as like one of those less lesser shogoths, which are unpleasant. But uh, I think it only happens while I'm holding the book. So I wish I went and got a little bit more monolith stone to make an energy collector, but whatever. So while that happens, let's look at the next step. Uh, so that talks about the pedestal versus just holding it. So the next step is to create a beneath teleporter. Let's see what that requires. Uh, here we go. The beneath teleporter uses four monolith stone, which I think I don't have. So I guess I have to make a trip back to there to get a couple more pieces of um, monolith stone, but that's no big deal. It has to be a dark oak fence gate, which means I have to find a dark oak tree. I wonder if dark oak sapling has a uh, crafting recipe. Uh, I don't, I can make the market, but I cannot pay the gold into the market. So I guess I have to go find a biome that has dark oak trees in it. That's kind of unfortunate. Um, it also requires a demonic will, which means we have to get into very basic blood magic, coal dust, and gunpowder. All right, so let's uh, let this charge to 1,000 potential energy, and then maybe let's tackle the blood magic bit next. So I'll be right back when it's done charging. So my book's still charging here, but I think I got one of the first uh, events that can randomly happen. And it gave me poison, corallium, plague, and weakness. And uh, this poison will actually bring me down to one heart. So if corallium plague is able to do that last heart of damage, I might die. Hey, I did die. Well, that sucks. Um, anyways, good thing my spawn's right here. So uh, unfortunately, that takes away my nutrition buffs. I used to have 100% in these two categories, and I no longer do. We can add this to the reasons why abyssal craft kind of sucks. Although, I guess if I made the statue, I didn't have to stand there and become targeted by it. Or not the statue, the uh, pedestal. Well, whatever, what can I do, right? I'll, I'll just keep complaining that Abyssal Craft sucks while not doing it the right way. So I guess that makes it my fault. Anyways, uh, back to finishing the charging process. Alright, so now our Necronomicon is charged above a thousand, which is all we need for now. So I'm getting out of here before something randomly decides to kill me again. Um... I also looked at the oh what hit me uh, stupid piranha. So I also looked at the uh, total recording time that we've had for this episode already, and I think where this is a, a good wrapping up point for this episode. So how about we call it here? Um, we were able to you know get into the Bronze Age and begin uh, our abyssal craft journeys today. So next up, I think we're gonna tackle blood magic and some other stuff to try to get to the beneath next episode. So I hope you enjoyed the episode and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.